we've lost our house. We've became homeless. My parents, you know, they, they lost their property now. I have to go live with a relative and the relative that I'm living with, they're very, very mean. It's, I'm being yelled at. Um, I'm being verbally abused, sometimes physical abuse, and it's just terrible, right? And um, I'm, I'm actually a 30-year-old client right now, and I'm reminded of that because I'm in a relationship and my partner wants us to have kids, but because of the trauma that I experienced as a child and the homelessness and having to go live with this relative, it's given me a lot of anxiety, right? It's given me a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry, and it's really, really hard. Hey, all this is Frank Latte with the Latte Wellness Group. We're doing our dramatization, um, where we're gonna call this series pretty much talk to a therapist, ask a therapist. Uh, essentially here, the scenario is um, I'm suffering from trauma. We've, we've lost our house. We've became homeless. My parents, you know, they, they lost their property now. I have to go live with a relative. And the relative that I'm living with, they're very, very mean. It's, I'm being yelled at. Um, I'm being verbally abused, sometimes physical abuse, and it's just terrible, right? And um, I'm, I'm actually a 30-year-old client right now, and I'm reminded of that because I'm in a relationship and my partner wants us to have kids, but because of the trauma that I experienced as a child and the homelessness and having to go live with this relative, it's given me a lot of anxiety, right? It's given me a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry, and it's really, really hard, right? So um, uh, this is, again, this is just a dram dramatization with the Latte Wellness Group. Um, these are not real characters, not real scenarios. It's all made up. And so we'll begin. My name is going to be Frank. I'm 30 years old, and we also have Lori Persh, which is the therapist. She's going to be playing a role with the therapist. And um, yeah, I'll let you begin, Lori. Hi, Frank. I'm so happy that you wanting to get some therapeutic professional advice about what you're going through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, what I wrote on there, again, I'm 30 years old. Um, I experienced some trauma as a child. Uh, my parents, we lost our house. And so I had to go live with a family member. And um, the family member, they were verbally abusive, uh, sometimes physically abusive. They were very, very strict. They treated me like an unwanted child, right? I, I can see how that would be traumatic and uh, not something to forget. Yeah, and it's coming up. It's creating me anxiety. It's actually causing a lot of anxiety and stress right now because I've been with my girlfriend for uh, going on three years now, you know, we're pretty serious and we're thinking about getting married and the thought of, we're actually going to premarital counseling Good. and they were saying, you know, what are our thoughts on kids? And I, I'm so traumatized by my childhood that the thought of having a kid and I, it just creates so much anxiety. You know, um, I would never want my kid to go through that. And it's just, I just don't, it's like I'm, every time we talk about having a kid, it's like I'm reliving that trauma, the, the, tra the trauma from my own childhood. Is there anything else other than discussion about children that triggers that anxiety? Um, I think also seeing her relationship with her parents, seeing my fian uh, well, yeah, my fiance's relationship with her parents, um, how it's, you know, very loving, caring. Um, my parents, I was mad at them for, you know, because we had to be homeless and I felt that they abandoned me um, um, and pretty much, you know, we, 
after a couple of years, we all got back together and, you know, we were able to go to an apartment. But the relationship wasn't really quite there. I, I, would, I just harbored a lot of bitterness and anger and frustration at them. So you found a girlfriend that you've been with for three years who has a relationship with her family that you wish you had. Is that correct? That's correct. So there must be something in you that she saw positive and your ability to bounce back and connect with her and her family. What, so I'm guessing that you've been able to overcome some other barriers in your life. You're 30 years old now. What, you know, how, um, do you have a steady job that you're proud of? Oh, absolutely. Because of the past financial things, you know, I've, you know, I have a good job. I'm a contractor. I make decent money. Um, I, I, I actually live my life, you know, like money is kind of like my number one priority because I know what it is not to have money and I know what it is to lose everything. And so I'm, it, that also creates a lot of issues as well, right? Because I'm more tighter with money and she's more loosey goosey with money, right? You know, like I, hey, you know, let's, let's save, let's save up, buy a down payment. Do we have to really spend a lot on a wedding? We could use that money, put down towards a down payment, you know, secure our future, um, things of that nature. Well, the, the fact that you're going for premarital counseling says a lot. Uh, do, you, do you feel like you're making progress and getting something out of that counseling? Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I wanted my own because okay. it's, I think it's good. You know, I think it's good. I mean, we're going through counseling to her church, but you know, my the way my mind works, you know, I'm thinking the church is that's home territory for her. You know, what I mean, I need my home territory. You know, my, my mind works a little bit different than a lot of other people's mind. And so um, the, the pre-medical, you know, um, he actually recommended that I get my own because it, it, it was bringing, bringing out a lot of traumatic issues. How does the anxiety affect you? Does it affect your work? Does it affect your daily stuff? Sometimes anxiety can just be inside, inside your head, and it's worry. And sometimes it actually feels like it affects you physically. So it could do one or the other or both. I know it's worry. I know it's really, I know the anxiety is a really, really big worry. Um, I just don't know, like... Physically, no, but just, well, I guess I, I feel like my heart, be, my heart's racing and it's like, but I just, it just brings up just an unpleasant time in my life. In just one meeting today, we're not going to solve everything, but, I'll, but I do know already that I can give you some ideas to help you. Oh, sure. Uh, because, um, because you've already um, expressed them, you just gotta be able to bounce them back on yourself. The You have been motivated by what you didn't have financially and been able to turn that into a positive direction with your career. So in the other times that you get triggered I want you to remind yourself, I have the ability to turn this into something positive. Sometimes we learn from what we don't want. And so if you um, don't want hard feelings for your children, we can't protect children from everything. 
it sometimes toughens them up a little bit. I, I don't want to say that in a bad way to be too harsh on children, but you've learned a lot from your experiences that you can channel in a positive way. And so every time that you start feeling anxiety, I want you to stop, take a deep breath. Um, if your heart starts pounding, make sure you always have a drink with you because if you sip some water, it is hard to break. If when you're sipping water, you can't hyperventilate. It's impossible to do the both both of them at the same time. So you take a sip of water, take a deep breath, and then remind yourself, hey, I've got some inborn natural resources. If you see it happening too much and you find that you're, ha you're having more triggers, then maybe it's good to be aware of that rather than blaming it all on one kind of thing. So you could write, you could write those down and then in your own individual counseling, we can talk about that. So we can um, work on what you can tell yourself instead. So I'm going to sum that up. You can have a drink of water, take a deep breath, do some um, positive self-talk based on what you've already positively accomplished. Those are three things for when you're feeling triggered. A fourth thing, just as an added bonus, might be to do journal, make a diary, write it down somewhere in a calendar. Uh, so already those are some, those are four ideas I just want to give you to get yourself started, to recognize that you've got this in you and just talking it out with therapists is a great idea. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I, I definitely appreciate those resources. Um, I know we only got a little bit of time here left. But I was wondering though, I just can't get over, like whenever, whenever my fiance now says, you know, kids, my heart just like, just races, right? And it's just like, I'm just filled with so much anxiety, right? It's just so much worry about the, you know, like just worried about their future I'm just worried about everything and what and I just kind of freeze up and I don't really share with my fiance so like I guess two things here is you know how can I better explain to her um you know it's a little bit embarrassing right it is a little bit like like it, there's shame in it too so i don't i can't tell this story to everyone you know i don't want everyone to know because in this world you know again the way my mind works is you know she's gonna she's gonna take that and she's gonna use it right like in the past you know things that i have said like and when she gets angry or upset she then throws it back in my face right and so um it it's it, it's I don't really tell her the full story I haven't really told her but I'm also just just like that anxiety of just the kids I just start to just shut down well it's that you know it sounds like you want to be more open with your fiance but you're really worried yeah. about how she's going to take it and especially because it's so it's something that's so important to her and so normal and then you don't feel so normal when you get real anxious and triggered absolutely so the uh not i'm not going to say that you should or shouldn't have kids because in just a, you know real short stuff like that but not it, it's an important discussion no matter how quote unquote normal you are all couples have to talk about it and so you might start with how you and your fiance talk about things that aren't quite as serious and look at your style uh, because you mentioned when she gets mad, she throws things back at you. 
So if there's something that she's thrown back at you and now when you and she are on a good plane, maybe you're having a good, you know, maybe it's after um, a nice date and you're just sitting down and, you know, if you say, you know, if you're thinking of getting married and she's thinking of having kids, you're going to say to her, you know, I really love you and I want, you know, I think we should be able to trust each other with everything. Um, but it doesn't mean we're going to agree on every, agree on everything. So let's talk about that time that I shared ABC with you and we've gotten through it. We should figure out how to get through our differences. What do you think? And just start up a conversation like that. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's a good idea. I think it is good to have that conversation with her. Yeah, well, 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 what about that anxiety piece of whenever, you know, we she mentions kids and I just kind of like... When you freeze, freeze yeah, it. when you freeze up? Yeah. Yeah, have you ever noticed her freeze up for anything? No. Okay. But you have noticed that she gets angry. Yes. Don't all women get angry? All people get angry. But there are two parts of anger. Just kind of like I was talking about with the anxiety. The anger could be anger demonstration. Or you show your anger. It could, Or it could just be an anger feeling inside. So we all have the feeling of anger when things aren't going our way. It might be minor irritation. And if somebody can't hold it in, it, it's going to be a lot more extreme. You know, if somebody's having a temper tantrum or feeling, you know, showing rage, that's a, the opposite extreme of minor irritation. But we all feel anger because we don't get what we want all the time when we want it. So the anger response of when we're not getting what we think we need is one of only three responses that all um, people and animals get. It's fight, flight, or freeze, but it gets more nuanced with human beings. So if you're the one who freezes up, when something stresses you, your fiance could be the one who gets angry. So the anger is the fight kind of response. Yours is the freeze kind of response. So when you're having that serious discussion and you could, if, if you're seeing a regular counselor in your premarital counseling, you could even bring it up. You could say, can we talk about our different styles of fight, flight, or freeze so that we don't upset each other too much? So that's something to know about. Fight, flight, or freeze, and people have different responses. Hmm. Okay, okay. No, I think this has been great. And so um, I like that you said fight, um, flight. Fight, flight, mm -hmm. or freeze. I call it the three Fs. The three S. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Um. And um. And so, going back to the the when the when the kids when the thought about kids come up, and I just freeze. You're saying, what was the strategy for that again? Well. It's back to well. First off, it's letting her know. It's a serious, this is a serious topic. Mm. And I, my response for something serious that I don't know how to address is to freeze up. So just let her know. Okay. You know, just let her know so that when it happens again um, and you freeze up, if you haven't shut down that you don't even hear her and I don't think that happens to you, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, then um, at least she'll know hey, have you frozen up again with this? And, you know, tell her to say, to remind you, you've frozen up, you know, and you can say, yeah, I froze up. I guess I'm not ready to, to discuss it yet. 
Um, I'm trying to get there. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely try that. Yeah. You know. No, this has been very, very helpful. Thank you. 